Have you ever taken a closer look at a wrench? Really looked at it? Whether it's an open-end wrench or a box-end one, you'll notice something odd about it. The head, the part that grips the nut or bolt, isn't perfectly straight in line with the handle. It's tilted, usually at a 15-degree angle. Now, if you're anything like me, your first thought might be, huh, that's strange. Why not just make it straight? I mean, wouldn't it be easier to apply force that way? But as with most things in tool design, that angle is very intentional. So let's break it all down, right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the situation most people can picture. You're lying under a car, reaching into a tight engine bay, trying to loosen a bolt. There's barely enough room to swing your arm, let alone rotate a wrench in a full circle. That 15 degree tilt, it's what allows the wrench to work in these kinds of cramped spaces. With a straight head wrench, once you hit an obstacle, maybe another part of the engine or the wall of the engine bay, you're stuck. But with that slight tilt, you can flip the wrench over after each partial turn and the angle gives you just enough clearance to continue tightening or loosening the fastener. It essentially cuts the rotation arc you need in half. This isn't just a happy accident. It's geometry helping your wrist do what would otherwise be impossible in tight quarters. Think of it like this. When you place an angled wrench on a hexagonal nut, you're gripping two of the six flat sides. If you rotate the wrench as far as space allows, let's say just 30 degrees before hitting something, you can lift it off, flip it, and because the head is angled, the wrench now grabs the nut in a slightly offset position. That offset lets you move the nut another 30 degrees, even though your hand never had to move beyond that limited arc. By alternating back and forth, flipping the wrench, you're gradually turning the nut using just a small amount of motion. That 15 degree offset multiplies your access options. It's the tool equivalent of taking baby steps to move forward in a narrow hallway. You're still making progress, just more cleverly. Another often overlooked benefit of the angled head is hand clearance. When you're working on something flat, like a panel or floor, the angled head raises your knuckles just a little bit higher than the surface. That prevents skin scraping and makes for a more comfortable grip. It also reduces the chances of the wrench slipping off due to a shallow grip caused by awkward angles. The ergonomic design isn't about luxury. It's about making repeated motion safer and less painful. Mechanics, plumbers, and anyone who spent a few hours twisting fasteners can tell you, your hands take a beating. Anything that reduces the grind matters. The angle makes the tool feel like an extension of your wrist rather than a clunky piece of metal. Now, both open-end wrenches and box-end wrenches usually share this 15-degree offset, but they use it a bit differently. The box end wrench fully encircles the bolt or nut, offering better grip and torque. That angle makes it easy to reposition the wrench when you're working in tight or repetitive situations. Open end wrenches, on the other hand, don't have full coverage. They slide onto two sides of the nut, but they benefit from the same tilt. When you flip the wrench over, the grip shifts slightly, allowing for more movement within tight spaces. It's the same principle in both designs. Use the angle to get more rotation with less actual movement. Some wrenches go even further with a double offset, one at the head and another at the handle, particularly in box end versions. This gives even more hand clearance and lets the tool reach down into recessed spots. These tweaks might seem small, but in a job where the difference between success and failure is measured in millimeters, it's everything. You might be wondering, why exactly 15 degrees? Why not 10 or 20? Turns out, 15 degrees hits a sweet spot between movement and usability. If the angle were any smaller, 
you'd gain almost nothing when flipping the wrench. Too steep, and you'd start losing torque and stability. With a 15-degree tilt, you can rotate the wrench on a six-sided bolt in 30-degree increments, meaning it only takes 12 flips to make a full 360-degree turn. That's efficient enough to keep you moving, but not so steep that you're constantly readjusting. It's one of those Goldilocks measurements. Not too much, not too little, just right. This wasn't randomly chosen by modern engineers either. The concept has been around for a long time, evolving through years of trial and error by blacksmiths, mechanics, and toolmakers who knew that sometimes function has to dance with physics. Even with all the ratcheting wrenches, socket sets, and power tools we have today, the good old angled head wrench is still indispensable. Why? Because it just works. You don't need batteries. You don't need clearance for a ratcheting mechanism. And in tight, dirty, or oddly shaped work areas, sometimes it's still the fastest, most reliable option. And get this. Some modern box-end wrenches have a ratcheting feature built into the angled head. These hybrid designs still honor that 15-degree tradition, but with a twist. Literally. They allow for continuous motion without flipping the wrench, making things even faster when conditions allow. But the angle remains. Even with fancy additions, the fundamental geometry hasn't changed because it's already doing its job brilliantly. So the next time you reach into your toolbox, pick up a wrench, and start turning a stubborn bolt, remember that the angle you're holding is more than just a bend in the metal. It's a carefully thought out feature designed to make your job easier, your movements more efficient, and your knuckles less bruised. It's one of those quiet little triumphs of engineering, so seamless and intuitive that most people don't even notice it. Wrenches don't shout for attention. They're not flashy. But that subtle 15-degree tilt is a reminder that even in the simplest tools, there's a lot of smart design hiding in plain sight. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.